This is the John Hallett Podcast with John Hallett. It's because the way we're living, we need to change it, make it change today, and all business. learn from failure. Maybe they just wanted it a little bit more than you. That's probably the fact. And now your host, John Hallett. Hey, everyone. Today I'm joined, as always, with my friend Josh Hammerling, a.k.a. Sparkle Sash. I like hammer time better. Um, Me too, but... Yeah, that sounds a lot tougher. Yeah. But, uh, I earned that. I don't want to hear it. Yeah. I earned that. You earned it with your fantastic idea of having everybody in a Girl Scout sash. It was a... You know what? It was a it joke. It was a joke. You're and not, it sticks with me forever. Your punchline... It seemed like you were serious. You were being too sarcastic. First off, when you share that with Todd, that's when I was like, he's off my Christmas list. I don't think I was ever wrong. I don't think I was ever wrong. And then I was like, and then I was was called Sparkle Sash. It's a long story. We've covered it before. Long story. Today we're talking a little bit about martial arts. This want to be our focus, yeah. the state of martial arts, uh, 2023 and 2024 getting yeah. closer, right. closer all the time. I can't believe July is gone. Oh, right. And we're probably talking about a little current events, what's going around yeah. in the world. Um, I think one thing hmm. about that, we had a bunch of things that were kind of floating around and talking about in the news from Georgia Power, uh, putting on a nuclear yeah. power, yeah. went online. I think that's fantastic yeah. to get rid of gas stoves, and which I'm like, I'm done. Like, There's the line! <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> when you start messing uh, the way I cook my food, right? But just... I really think the news cycle, I think I was listening to Joe Rogan and uh, Jim Gaffigan, which Jim Gaffigan just makes me just laugh. He's pretty funny, Just dude. freaking laugh. Yeah. I was like, I can't even deliver his punchlines because he was talking about uh, cold plunge. He's like... I am totally down with that. <laughs> Minus the cold. <laughs> right. I mean, Joey's like, is it just, what is this? Is this trendy? I forget right. what he was like. <laughs> is this trendy? Is it, I don't know if he used Zumba or something, but he's like, is it, what is this? Oh, like, this is so much fun. Is it really real? And Joe's like, oh, it's like, oh, I'm totally down with that. Minus the cold. Mm. Um, but I think the news cycle is so fast on purpose. <sighs> Keep you guessing. Um, yeah. You got the, the the power elite manipulating the go that government for special interests. I'm what? sick of them. That doesn't. Of, that's not real. That's a conspiracy. That's You're making real. it up. That's not money's not real. Nobody, <laughs> right. Nobody wants more money and power. So this is my idea I had yesterday. Oh. That Uh-oh. I think we should. <laughs> Well, just go. Ideas. No, just go. I'm What's wrong to... with no, my no, ideas, No, no, just Josh. go. Just go. Let's see what he's got. I think we should stick with the topic before we get allowed to move on. Okay. I like that. Like, let's solve this. Let's okay. focus on it. Oh, I thought you were talking to me about the general show. Keep going. <laughs> oh, you thought the I show. Like, I was like, wow, you just threw me under the bus. That's harsh. No. <laughs> I didn't throw you under the bus no, no, today. No. But stick... I think we need to yeah. stick with the topic. Let's try to fix <sighs> immigration. Because I'm all for, we need people in the country. I've said it before, I think anybody that passes the background check and does it legally, there's plenty of bad people in the country that are Americans yeah. that I think we need to do something with. Pedophiles being number one, maybe. Um, yeah. Yeah. Make them pay a fine, and they're in. But we're so... Yeah, why, Josh? Why? Well, I don't know. There was this... We have these laws, and then there's... There's people but I'm like, we got to How what are we gonna like? Could you imagine? Like, we've got to round up, and how much money that's gonna cost to round everybody up and yeah. make them recross the border? No, <laughs> dude. Simple. Make them pay a fine. I mean, we're gonna make gonna be more a... money that way than trying to round them no, all we up won't and because... treat them. They a lot of these people want to be in the country for the I right reason. I get that. And yes, they did something illegal, so you're going to pay a fine. Oh, man. I mean, they, They're going to pay a fine. It just, just keep it simple, Josh. I, I, I see where simple. you're going with this. I see where you're going with it. A lot of people have done that, but I, I, I don't know. I think there's a principle thing here where it's like, you already thumbed your nose at the U.S. when you crossed that border, right? And I just don't want people showing up to my house and trying to set my house on fire. So well, I'm, I'm not trying to be... Who's setting your house on fire? Yeah. 
So has your house ever been tried to be set? Some illegal has come up to your house and tried to set your house on no fire. No comment. No comment. No comment. Okay, I'm gonna leave it at that. No. I'm gonna comment. say ninety nine point nine 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 percent of Americans have not had. Yeah. To say no comment to that. So uh, no comment, John. No comment. So I don't know. Who you pissed off? I don't know either, but I'm not going to say any more names because I'm really trying. To, <laughs> at that point in my life, I was hopefully over. So but let's just, keep it simple, though. You're making it too. Yes, you're just I'm getting it too. I, I, let it go, man. Just let it go. Let it go. People and people just move on. Change the paradigm. Move change the, the way you're thinking. The, no, I don't want to change, change the way you're thinking. Like, that one, I'm pretty. Like we're how I are we going to solve it? I just can't go into Mexico Everything when they else. take me and then make me pay a fine. Yeah, they're going to make you pay a or fine. Or Canada? Yeah, they're going to make you pay a fine. And this is supposed to be like paradise, right? It's just moving on. Let's fix the freaking country. Instead, you, who I thought was my friend, wants Whoa! to now... <laughs> you want to freaking debate and have this big... Well, yeah, I don't I, know. Like, hey, that's this the part one I'm going to push back on. I don't... That one's not We just have to move on. We got to move on. We just have to move on. And we're going to spend fucking 20 years yeah. debating about this bullshit. Make a freaking decision. I'm on and one. I got boom. one. <laughs> make them pay a fine. Okay, so let's say we make them pay a fine and they get to stay. We're and off topic. What are we doing? Okay, we are. What are they, you yeah, got me all fired need up. people. They're here. What are we going to do? Get out right. all the lazy so we, people to work? They don't even want to work now. Well, you're like, we need to stay on a, a topic, and then why don't we fix immigration? And then we just figured out why we can't fix it because... I'm done. I fixed it. Fine. Yeah, <laughs> well, no, 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 you didn't. But yeah, there's that. that but that, that was just an example yeah. of the news cycle continuing, continuing, and then people are enraged for 30 seconds. All this shit. There's that, plastics in the ocean, all this stuff. Like McDonald's, like my wife showed me a thing from McDonald's and how perfect their French fries, which I had forgotten, and that. The farmers don't want to go out into the fields for like five to seven days after they spray the fields. And then they have to go in this ginormo um, barn warehouse thing like giant, like the size of a football stadium kind of thing for like five days. So so they dissipate whatever chemical before. I'm like, so there's not a what brown spot. So there's fries. no brown spot on stupid McDonald's French fries. These but that's companies a are killing. A, I know it. What? It's just a potato. It's supposed to have brown spots. So. Not according to McDonald's. Perfect golden fries. Yeah. So I'm sick of these companies destroying people's health. Like again, yeah, it's just money and the news cycle. But people are going to be pissed off about it for a minute. Let's solve the problem. You know what? That's crazy. That's crazy. You're adding all these chemicals, all this stuff. Never mind added sugar. All that. The beef flavoring that they lied about, so. Oh, yeah, I got a picture for you of, like, the new uh, thing on net carbs. Net in the grocery carbs. carbs. And then you look in the back, yeah. and they're putting net carbs. You lying pieces of crap. What do you mean? Like, what, Look what, at the back. Oh. I can send you the picture. I took, sure, a, sure. I took a picture. So what are they measuring and tell the me front. about on net carbs? Like, I don't know where they're coming up with net carbs, but yeah. in the back, then you're like, net carbs, five. Look in the back, 28. 35 you know you're like wait all right net carbs so there's 28 carbohydrates but i'm only netting five is that what they're trying to they're get bullshit. At? then it can't that's not going to work for somebody that's diabetic yeah, you like that right. are looking at those things or just trying to eat healthier but then it goes really to get on the edges of the grocery store but some of that stuff is convenient right like there's great things about some of these fun. things and convenience that we you know Having, you know, can't carry around a steak in your backpack. No, but they're but, trying to make me feel good about the junk food I'm eating. I'm only getting well, just five to, out of this. Yeah, they're just fooling people. It's like people. justification numbers. It's like we've talked about it before. Mm. But we uh, with prescription, um, they oh. just have so much money. Um, it, it's crazy. So I think we just need to solve some problems, get special interest out of there. I'm kind of like, let the American people... Well, vote too much i mean and there's always a way to hack everything but i'm kind of like you know facial recognition something some of this freaking technology that you're like it's got to be facial recognition and then i vote yes on taxing 
And then whatever your what whatever your thirty second answer is on immigration, go thirty second. This yeah, you like <laughs> you it now? Still politics to TikTok <laughs> in a way, like a social media platform. It's a, yeah, like it's an interesting let, thought. I kind of like that. It's funny. Like let the people vote. Make it convenient. Facial recognition. That's a freaking person. I have find them. What's yours? Okay. Thirty seconds. Go. So, right, one could minute. you imagine if politics now goes to, like, whoever's the prettiest face on, on, you know, what what about that one gymnast out of LSU? She could be president overnight because she would just have a following of voters that would vote, right? I mean, that would be interesting. It would get a whole bunch of different voices out there. You would see new faces. You're avoiding the question of what you're going to do with immigration. I thought you said we moved on to a different time. No, I said 30 seconds. I've right? got... I've got. Oh, okay, okay. I've we've got, got your phone. You've right. got your phone. Get them all together. I'm voting for tax Very them. Very politely. And your send, choice is. Send them back. Send them back. Send them back. It's going to cost the American public a billion dollars. Let's go. We're spending that I'm much money make, and we're spending I'm a trillion every day. I'm going to make 10. <laughs> and then there's another. There, you know, there's, yeah. three, there's three choices. All right. Do you know, you want to send it. it back, but let the American people decide. And yeah, there's going to be a way to hack everything. Like nothing's freaking perfect, yeah. but let the American people's voice get heard. The politicians ignore people all the time, but I really no, they think don't. they listen to everything we say. I really think we need to focus on a topic, fix it. Let's fix the medical. The prescriptions are freaking crazy out there. It's never They're gonna... making so much money. I'm all for profit, but people's health, whew, I don't whole, think you should be making different. quadruple or whatever. Some of these um, prescriptions, they're making just an insane yeah. profit. Insane profit. Insulo- it insulo- goes insulo- beyond like be making a, a, a decent living. Yeah. Uh, We've got to fix that. This country needs to fix that. But, because I'm thinking, sorry, just I was trying to figure out what the point I was trying to make. Let's talk about martial arts. Okay. Let's talk because I let's talk about martial arts. Because you're in 2023 into a a diatribe. There, (laughs) I was like, here we go. (laughs) We're gonna start debating, fool. Let's go. All right. You just call me a fool. Fool, let's go. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. Mr. T. Is what I, <laughs> I loved Mr. T growing up. I loved Mr. T in oh the 18th. God. I'm just saying. How about the Fonz? I just saw the Fonz, the Fonz. on uh, the uh, the quarterback show. What is it called? It's on Netflix. We're watching. It's really good. They're following like four quarterbacks around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, Mahone was talking to Henry Winkler. Dude, that's awesome. He was like, he came and they were going to, like, it was cool. Like, it was all started social media wise, but he's like, it's the Fonz. And I'm like, He's pretty young to be like, man, the he's Fonz. the Fonz. Well, I mean, he was raised the right way. Up yeah. Watching Happy Days and yeah. all those shows. I did too because uh, this channel came out in the 80s. It was called Nick at Night. or Yeah. And it, it put all those on there. Happy Days. My Three Sons. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. All those great old shows. They were but, pretty good. But yeah, the Fonz, um, dude. So. I'd love to meet Henry Winkler. Yeah. But we're off topic. Okay. Martial arts. What do you think most people. Or at, I mean, you are just, yeah. you know, I'm too close to it sometimes. I've got that opinion of somebody that's been doing it since they were, I guess I was 19. Yeah. 51. You... I'm just saying I'm 50 plus now. I'm identifying as 50, 50 plus. plus. I was you can identify as 40. 50. I don't care. I mean, you can say it, but. We can go off my body age on my watch. Is that what? All right. What's that at? Anyway. Um, 47. So before we got started with the show today, I said to you. People get their information about martial arts from MMA. That is all they will ever see, right? Well, it's the biggest, right? I mean, again, it's huge. That's what people are getting fed. Exactly. On you know the UFC, it's, it's like in, in the bars. News cycle, you know, you're right? going to it's Dana White. It's there. That whole group. It's huge. Bill- it's millions awesome. Of dollars. I think somebody had commented yeah. like, and I don't know if they were assuming it was one of our trolls. We don't get trolls. You know, there you cannot reproduce the stress of that. And there's other things you can do. There's other stresses that are similar. Is it the same? No. Um, getting in that, right? Trying to replicate that. Mm-hmm. But you can replicate stress in other manners. I mean, mm-hmm. get pepper sprayed and then have to fight. There's other things. It. I always say there's more than one way you mm-hmm. can get things done. I think that's fantastic. 
but it's also you're devoting like I never wanted to I was always like I'm way too freaking old to be getting it. I'm not a freaking kid um, never felt I could justify the um, taking time away from the business and family to justify the training to be a professional to, to just even just quote. even do an amateur fight of like mm. what I would want to give it yeah but then I'm like then I'm training for this and I'm not training for self-defense mm. now you can like what we try to do here is create a lot of stress there's family members watching you there's other gym members watching there there's stress is it a giant arena no but having your wife in there can is you know can be just yeah. enough <laughs> sure. have your kids that think dad's the hero watching you it, you know is that enough kind of thing so there's more than one way i think um, competition is great for that there's fantastic things to to borrow and use but it is still different yeah you make a really good distinction between self-defense and sport right and you you, you always kind of tell people that like you we what you train is not a sport. You can get people in that you can train them to be a sport person, but like your whole focus, like you've always said when you were looking for something was to go home safe. And when people see nothing but the MMA, I mean, they, they, they it's really hard to figure out what the distinction between self-defense and sport is because the average person won't know. I mean, everyone's unconsciously incompetent is like one of our favorite tags, right? And that's yeah. what you get, right? I mean, it's, Every time a new person comes in, they don't know what they don't know. Yeah, they're suffering from Dunning Kruger. Everybody yeah. thinks they're better than they actually are. Or, or I'll get better in the moment, and it's like, yeah. And once you get in the moment, like in this school, you will um, RMSDF, you will raise the that stress, like you were talking about, to see how you will react, right? Because every time that you put them through that cycle, they learn a little more each time, right? And then when it's the first time, everybody just kind of like the panic is real. It, it, even good yeah, fighters, I, the panic is real. Yeah, or somebody pulls a knife. Yeah. Other thing, there it is different. But the public sees what they see. I mean, mm. if you go back to the '80s, they were seeing the Karate Kid and yeah. um, Van Damme and and movies like that. And there was no and, internet, so that's all they knew. Yeah, um, it's tough. I mean, I think you know you were saying it leads people down like oh, and I love jujitsu. I don't. I don't want to do a competition. I want to borrow. I. I don't want to get in trouble with anybody. I just want to stay safe. Mm -hmm. I don't want to get. I want to get myself out of there in the street. You know. So just playing around. You know. You can get yourself compromised. Mm -hmm. um, years ago, we had a guy that visited. He had moved to the Denver area. I knew he wasn't going to sign up, but he was way down the card. On the UFC, we were like, well, that's actually the guy, you know. I mean, you can tell when somebody, generally speaking, unless they're extremely, <laughs> extremely good and, be, you know, that type of narcissist that is really hard in, you know, in one act, uh, interaction to know if they're lying. But I'm um, just sparring with him, really humble guy. He came in and just had heard things about Krav Maga, wanted to do some. But he also came to our fight night, and people had left. I think my manager, Pam, might have still been kicking around. But I was rolling with him, and we were just messing around. And I'm just saying, nobody wants to make a mistake. Mm. Like, we're just here, and even, like, I was trying to bait him in, and he ended up just laughing. He's like, you're too good for that. I can tell. He's like, you're, get, you're setting me up, right? And we just laughed, and like, hey, good roll. Like, but I was just trying to, like, all right, we've been here, stalemated. Nobody's kind of trying to make a move or just both staying safe and waiting for the other guy to make a move. That's what I want to do in the street. I don't want to roll around in the street. And I yeah. think when you fight that way all the time, that's what you're going to go and revert back to. You know, people talk about training scars. You know, you get a little boo-boo from your training and you're going to do that. You're going to go back to maybe putting somebody in an arm bar Whatever it may be, and now you're doing great bodily harm to somebody. This is, di you know, it is different. And just rolling with weapons, having somebody pull a weapon mid fight is shocking. You've got to train yeah. that all the time. I mean, we'll put it out there, but I'm just rolling with, you know, one of our coaches, Braden. He's a fantastic wrestler, mm -hmm. he's good at BJJ. Yep. And I pulled the knife on him today, and he's like, Shh, whoa. Where did it go? He had, 
it was a really good role, really good learning experience um, for me. And I think good for people to watch and learn from. But he's like, well, how'd you switch hands? You know, like, well, how was I getting stabbed there? Mm-hmm. Even though he was playing the antagonist. Right. You know, so it's different. And I think people on that in that world just want to go back to we dominated the UFC. Yeah. Yes, you dominated the game and it rolls into my daughter now has to do BJJ. This is the way to go for self-defense. And you're like, that's still a competition. Self-defense yeah. is ugly. People want it, you know, people if for years want to come in and they think it's going to be cool and easy and I'm just going to do this move and where you're like, address the danger counterattack. Uh-huh. Fight's on. The fight yeah. is on. Because it's a fight. It's not a sport, right? Learn fighting skills and it's going to be ugly and they're, they're going to counter you. They're going to do something. People want it to be the cool move and... You know, what's the biggest movie now? Like John, John Wick, Wick and yeah. things of that nature in these action movies. And then you get people that just go all the way back to Bruce Lee and they got this in their head mm-hmm. that they're going to, it's that's what ugly. They see consume, right? It's ugly and you've got to train it. You know, from Todd Fossey, he loves to say, you know, train ugly. It's fantastic. People mm-hmm. think it's going to look pretty. It's not. No. And even a a ring fight is not all, like no, and that's things sport. go freaking bad and yeah. boom, somebody's on you. It sucks, and you just have to do it. But throw in somebody's gonna pull a knife on you, pull a gun on you. Yeah, um, their buddies now jumping you. Avoid, avoid. I mean, that's the favorite thing on YouTube is like you know, avoid the conflict. you're gonna. I mean, every time we post a gun defense, you're gonna get somebody killed, bro. And I'm like. I was telling my teenage class last night, I'm like, I'm pretty sure that if they want to kill you and they're like, move behind the building, whatever, get in the car, that you're going to die. That's what we're saying. We're not saying in any of our videos that we're going to do a gun defense when somebody says, give me your money. Mm -hmm. You feel they're going to hurt you. What I always say, I say it to little kids, that if you don't know that feeling, that you're in trouble with your mom or dad, go home and break something. Mm. And the little kids look at me and I'm like, and don't say Coach John told you to do this, right? Because they will. Some of parents, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, because some of the kids have never been in trouble, right? Sure. You ask the kids, oh, they're yeah. like, no, I'm like, you know, I've been in trouble. And they're like, I'm like, so you've never been in trouble. I'm like, all right, go home and break something. You need to feel that because that's the bully that's going to hurt you. Yeah. It's a similar, like, trust your gut, right? Just your instincts. It's tough. It is. So in a sport, when you get to a certain level, you kind of know what's coming, right? You, I don't know. To, if you to know some degree, coming. like I don't think so. You can feel like you've done enough of it to know that there's a pattern. You watch your opponent. You're trying to figure out what they're doing beforehand. So you're trying to set yourself up with some some experience and knowledge beforehand before you face somebody. That's what professional fighters oh, do. Oh yeah, like, they're, they're gonna, gonna go in film, and they're gonna watch. Oh yeah, right. They, they, they get an idea of what's coming, right? Because that's what the sports side of it is. There's only so many ways to put someone in a rear naked choker to get into a place, or you know, there's always surprises. Yeah, but they're the watching part, their tendencies, what they want, what they right. like to do. They're high level fighters, they know what's quote coming. But in the street, there's no film to watch, right? Yeah, there's, there's no predictability. There's some predictability in sport. There, there is a little bit because that's what you train for. You are. Your opponent, you are watching every move well, they do. Well, that's where, like, even from that, uh, whatever so, that show was, the quarterback, Mahone were saying, like, when you go against Belichick, they're going to do something totally different yeah. every week. They're mixing it up. So yeah. you can't find those little tendencies. I think it yeah. might have been him or um, – I'm not going to blank on the other na- uh, quarterbacks in there. But they're like, oh, when they're blitzing – Okay, the defensive tackle is just out a little over here. The normal to make space, the defensive end, and they're looking for people being a half a yard out of you know position. just a little sure. bit different of a setup. They're trying to make those reads. Yeah, that you know there people are crazy on the street. You have no idea. What right, there's nothing do. to watch. There's <laughs> no film. All you can do is try to train a scenario over and over. To get you to react and do in a way. things different, right? Yeah. Do something different, and you'll immediately. And it, it happens to me every time that I train. I revert back to something that I know, right? And if there's nothing in that toolbox, then I'm guessing. But at least I'm at a point now where I've got stuff in a toolbox that I could just keep going back to, because there's no other way that I know of how to train for the unpredictable, right? I mean, it's just 
Yeah, I mean, vigilance, I think... being ready, and then practice, practice, practice. Yeah, I mean, I think you know any good martial artist is going to be humble. I think that yeah. I mean, martial arts definitely humbles you because there's you lose all the time. I mean, if you're the training, skill level, like, yeah. There's that degree. I mean, I think you know a lot of people. I'm like, what are you looking for? You know, it was the guy that just texted me this morning, like, thanks, I joined Planet Fitness. I'm like, I don't even know how you're comparing Rocky Mountain Self-Defense and Fitness to Planet Fitness. I'm yeah. like, totally different model. Totally. Oh, yeah. I mean, what, you know, I guess you just clicked on it. Like, we do group classes. Right. We, you know, we'll do private lessons. It's only 10 bucks. But it is totally different. You get a $10 gym when you pay $10 to go to a gym. Yeah, That's I mean, that was my response. Like, you know take care if you're looking for a small gym that has a lot more personal attention let us know but if you're looking for the cheapest option how many people at big gyms get hurt because nobody told them how to do something right yeah i mean it's just some it works for some people it doesn't for a lot of people like the like we were talking about last week the ultra fitness person i don't you know i always think you still need a coach but generally speaking all right, hey, I've worked out in college. I have my trainers from, you know, volleyball, whatever sport I was playing. I'm probably pretty good. But the average person going in that just needs to get in shape, that yeah. wasn't an athlete, didn't have training, they need a lot of help. They, they just go back and, to what they maybe learned in high school. Like that one gym coach is like, do bench press and you're fine. Yeah, so. It's not but I way. think martial arts and what people are looking for mm-hmm. You have like you have to decide why are you joining it. Do you want to be able to go in and win tournaments and go into a gym and be the badass that's tapping everybody out doing that sport? Is it gonna it's like karate? Like, oh, the karate girl like kicked the would be kidnapper in the groin and she got away. Well, great. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, now you have to relate like now BJJ is the most popular thing out there and gets the most press and UFC and you go somebody was able to get out of it but worst case scenario there was no knife involved Mm -hmm. you know that it didn't look the same way you know I really feel like unless you're training these scenarios that are like our bad neighborhood yeah. Anything like that that you're putting people in real world scenarios that you're trying to de escalate, you might get jumped. Right. That that's not what most martial arts that are training for, you know, you're going to a bare knuckles gym, like Derek's um, girlfriend, mm-hmm. you're like, that's that looks different than defending yourself on the street. That's going for competition. Mm-hmm. Which is great. And those skills are going to translate but there's also that line of are you going to be held civilly liable? And if you're not training against a knife, what are you going to do when that person pulls a knife? Right. And yes, the boxer might just bam, 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 punch that, you know, punch somebody, whatever it may be. And awesome. You didn't need other skills in self defense. You didn't need. The knife defense. You didn't need a stick defense. Their buddy didn't grab you from behind in a bear hug. And do you have an immediate response to addressing that bear hug when nobody's really bear hugging you? Yes. And if you fight, you're going to be overall better than the average person. But you still might be a couple seconds off and delayed in your response because you're not training that attack. You know, and I'm thinking, you know, and different things like wrestling, that's very similar. Those guys, somebody has your back all the time. They're comfortable there. There's tons of things, obviously, from sport and martial arts that a self-defense system is going to take and use. So kind of dovetailing on this, what is your thought on um, like pop culture and martial arts? Because back when the Karate Kid came out, right, everybody wanted karate. Jean-Claude yes. Van Damme shows up. Everybody wanted Taekwondo because of the... Even though he wasn't Taekwondo, right? It, it sort of seems to be what people gravitated towards. And with pop culture now kind of going towards the John Wick BJJ and with current MMA influencing that, I mean, are we looking at a long-term BJJ future? Or is there finally going to be a, a kind of a change 
in people's perception of martial arts, right? Because really that's what they've been controlling. It's been controlled through media. It's controlled through what you see in the news cycle. We see it all the time because sports is certainly um, reports on that stuff. But what what is the current future of martial arts look like because of pop culture from your opinion as a, a person who's been working in the industry for I won't say how many years because we talked about that earlier I think it's going to continue to evolve I mean I think MMA is evolving martial arts and being able to watch things and the way social media where you can now see something from somebody else and go, wow, I want to go out and do a seminar with Mm -hmm. that guy, or I want to bring that guy in Mm -hmm. and just plain old seeing a technique and going, Oh, can I replicate that? It is evolving so quickly now that if somebody does something in, you know, on the, in the UFC, Mm -hmm. everybody sees that, Mm -hmm. you know, it's not even like, geez, did I, I didn't pay for the pay-per-view fight way back when, you know, I'm like, I think that is evolving. So I think it's fantastic track mm. for martial arts as a sure. whole. But are you I mean like self defense is different. Yeah. And that's why I constantly like, oh, is this good for my daughter? I'm like, what what do you how long is she gonna spend training? Yeah. Six months? Like, you know, I think practical give them an overall self defense feel versus a fighting feel because we're going to try to touch on knife gone as a beginner in Krav Maga, like different mm-hmm. aspects in self-defense. And I yeah. even, you know, have gone back, we've gone back and forth lately um, that I've got, you know, a thing with Jeff Jimmo that I've got to get back into the gym for another seminar that Krav Maga is our base, but there's been just l- other layers over the last 20 plus years. I think our self-defense base is, Krav Maga because it's just so practical. You know, women have to serve in the Israeli military. It's no nonsense. Made for all ages. Yeah. If you're older, <laughs> you like doing something um, like a crazy martial, like Taekwondo and high kicks and things of that nature, just be no nonsense. Yeah. Get an overall view. Get up in that drone and look at self-defense and the things that can happen to you. It's like, I don't want to specialize. I don't want to specialize. That was something, you know, back to my dad of like in as a carpenter. I mean, I'm not sure. I think we talked about it in the podcast. He like made yeah. me learn every trade. Mm-hmm. Don't specialize. If you're a roofer, you're only going to get calls for a roof. For a roof. Nobody's calling you for anything else in those slow times. Mm-hmm. You know, diversify. You know, have other things at your gym. It's like we why we have fitness. Why we were looking for you know, a firearms training program and we have the citizen defender with Todd Fossey, you know, that like diversify, like mm-hmm. don't just have a one thing. Sure. Like in some places, like great. <laughs> you know, and I was telling the kids last night, if you're going to do one thing, you better be really good at it. If you're a plumber that just does faucets, be you better not scratch the finish. <laughs> right. Um, but that, I think the track is going to continue to evolve. I think it's good. But what are you looking for out of a martial art? Is what I ask people all the time. Like, what do you want to learn self-defense? Well, they don't know what they're looking for because movies and TV have influenced them so much. Yeah, people get so influenced by the UFC. And like, this is... Mm. But that's not self-defense. Like, right. obviously, you could use trainer blades and, and things of that nature and create the whatever competition of street fighting and somebody's going to pull a knife on you, pull a gun on you. You know, does it all start with a simple assault? How do you start that? Sure. <laughs> you know, all right. It's I a, st- it's a right into an aggravated assault. Somebody, you know, whatever's happening here. Well, I've been training That's that self-defense forever. I mean, we've been training that for a while and I still get caught up in that. Like what yeah, is it? It's not easy stuff, but we can borrow from martial arts, but I think mm-hmm. the general public goes oh okay yeah i'm gonna be doing that it's like yeah you're gonna do the crane kick from the karate kid that's what you're gonna do i mean if i was to do that to any one of the green belts during a class they're just gonna kick my butt yeah why would you want to be it's so hollywood yeah i mean people thought people um 
people really thought that they could pull that shit off. I mean, yeah, like it told a whole generation oh, they I could, mean, right? Yeah. I mean, when I started martial arts, I mean, I thought, I, oh yeah, yeah, right. Oh, I thought I could. Yeah, you're gonna get that freaking good, you know, <laughs> until you're like. I used to watch the Rocky. Get that realization, and that's you're like, I think some people might quit. Like, oh, wait, I'm not going to You're like, This is not what I thought it was. Yeah, I can't do that. Like, oh, it doesn't work. It doesn't work because you're like, that's freaking Hollywood stuff. It's right. even um, exactly. comments it's in there in our YouTube. Um, the, the, ignore their grammar. Should not allow showing this because is someone could believe these theatrical lies quotes around that um, oh okay but some of it is slow training where people don't under they don't even train so they just have no idea of like youtube just thinks everything should be a full-on fist fight you know all the time caught on film it's like the guy we showed god that the thing i sent out to the instructor just to the guy shooting in his car that through was, the dang window um craziness like nobody's signing up for that or you know 0.01 percent are gonna be like yeah come in and just destroy me and i'll destroy you for the sake of a day's training or probably five minutes and how am i gonna learn from that though like if you yeah, just you come out and kick my like butt? training and teaching like and then you have your hard days oh yeah. quarterly yearly things of that nature you know that's how we look at um, our throw down the gauntlet here at RMSDF. Like, that's testing here. Like, throw down the gauntlet. Where some people, they, they don't want that test. And I'm like, it's similar. Like, when people go, like, that's why people do competition. That's why we test here. Like, throw down the gauntlet, Josh. Like, oh, I don't, I'm, I'm not in it for the belt. I'm like, yeah, but can you do it under stress? Hmm. That's why I started, that's why I started calling it throw down the gauntlet instead of testing. Mm -hmm. I want to test. I'm not in for the belt. Like, cool. That's fine. All right. Well, it's stress day. I'm like, I'm throwing down the gauntlet. Can you do it without thinking? Yeah. Can you do it when you're exhausted and you're tired? Right. So I'm throwing down the gauntlet. Challenge has been issued. Then you're, are you backing down? You're like, we have way more people test with throw down the gauntlet than, when we call the, the testing. testing. Yeah, I, I could see that. And it, it just, I mean, testing also gets, like the word test freaks some people out. Oh, yeah, that's it, it, yeah. And it's just like, wouldn't you just rather call it, like throw down the gauntlet? And you just, essentially, it's like using all the skills that you've been taught during that belt and then you're fighting, like for real. I mean, you're setting it up, so it's it's more life-based. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fun like to watch. those scenarios. Like yeah. I was saying, I think I got, I think we got off topic on you know, the kids and somebody saying, you know, you're going to get somebody killed with, you know, somebody's got a gun to your back. They're going to pull the trigger. That's what we're saying. Yeah. Now I'm going to go. I'm not trying to be cool in the movies, but are we going to clip it for a YouTube short? Yeah. And show things that we do here. We're talking worst we're case business. scenario. <laughs> it's, it's, it's what, what we, do. we do. We're not like, yeah. Okay. Here's my money. All right. And, uh, End of the clip. Yeah. Okay. Only, like, hey, give the, me your money. All right, here you go. It's less well, than 1%. Well, 1 out of 10, I right. don't know what the... 1 out of 10, they're going to be like, all right, get on your knees. Or yeah. they get wigged out. You know, you have a bad response. Yeah. You know? Um, Happens all the You kind of challenge them. Yeah. Like, the number one and two, I, th- I think it was just one prison. I'm not sure, but... I'm sure it would follow through through the country. I think it was a California prison that they asked killers why they killed. Mm-hmm. And it was, and this is again you know, from IDS and Todd Fossey um, brought us this study that it was, they were challenged or insulted. Mm-hmm. So did you say something that challenged that guy? Did you posture up in such a manner that they now go, oh, did you just throw it on the gauntlet? Mm-hmm. It's a fight now. And now they're attacking you. That's why we do all these little drills that might not be much, but just practicing. That's where I'm like, sometimes 
we've been talking about doing a little 101 video of like how to be a good attacker, how to help role play. Mm -hmm. So even today, people get too carried away with the monkey dance. And I'm like, no, I was just one random stick attack from training. And even that, I think mo some of them could have been better attacks or more set up that they really were just hanging out behind a heavy bag, hanging outside the door, just outside the room um, and coming out of nowhere. And then it was just interacting on the street. Somebody may attack you. Hey, let's get an attack in there. At least one, but then all of a sudden people just get da 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 da. And you're like, no, somebody's already engaged in them. What are the odds? Mm -hmm. Certainly there's some good odds that two people might be on you, but people learn, need to learn how to be good attackers and to role play and give somebody a good rep that they're not yeah. treating a little boo boo by, you know, their role playing just being kind of off. And most people are like, oh, it's real. Like, yeah, some good chaos ones, but they've got to be decent. And just all of a sudden, you're you're talking to me, and I'm going, give me your money, Josh. And you're like, here you go. And some dude starts screaming and running at you with a stick. Half of it's surprise, right? That yeah. you're getting jumped by the stick. You know, is the what if, oh, it was the guy's friends? Possibly. Yeah, but the biggest was, thing, things different. are coming at you by surprise, that we're practicing getting jumped, not being ready for whatever comes at us, but you know, having some de-escalation, recognizing somebody might look like they have a problem and just going, hey man, I can't help you. Or just avoiding it. Like how many times people create this, I'm gonna get close to them. Like we had one today, I'm like, why did you get near two big dudes that were getting into a fight? Why? You're gonna pull them off? No, yeah. you're not. You're not pulling those guys off. The step was nine one one. If you were that concerned, or get it on video, or both. Get the hell out of there. <laughs> the speakerphone. Why are you close? Yeah. You know, it was like the other one that we I referenced in this, in today's drill of, I'm beating somebody with a stick, and they were in our citizen defender class, and they like I don't know, I'm not gonna pull my gun, but they got too close, and I was like, is he gonna pull the gun? <laughs> Yeah. Is he going to do, what is he going to do? And I'm just smashing, smashing, smashing. And I'm like, this guy's like six feet away. And I just turned and hit him with the stick. I'm like, why were we that close? If you're not going to shoot the guy that's beating somebody like a pumpkin, uh -huh. get away, call 911. But yeah. he was like, I was trying to figure it out. I didn't know who was the good guy, bad guy. Should I? And I'm like, absolutely. Like, if you don't know, by all means, <laughs> right? You know, like I don't know what the hell that guy. You know, that guy just pull a knife on him and he's hitting him with a stick. I don't know. No. Run your OODA loop, but right. you you want to do that with some distance and maybe tactically move so you're not right there. <laughs> so the guy with the stick doesn't boom right. doesn't see you and go. You know what? I'm on a rampage. Right. You're next. And you're next. Um, yeah, that's the scariest one. You see me, and you're going to identify me, and I'm going to now, oh, now I'm going to take you out. And right. that has happened plenty of times where you see robberies gone wrong, and they ended up cutting or shooting the person, even just with the trigger flinch. You know, they, yeah. they're they just a little hopped up, and then they go, you can see them running. Yeah. Of oh, like, yeah. oh, shit, I shot this guy. What do I do now? Well, leave no witness. And you're like, well, there was a security camera is how we saw right. it. But, you know, they blank on even that. But they, you can see them go, oh, just finish it. Kill them. Right. They've got no they're, other choice. So that stuff happens. Which is scary. Right. Yeah, yeah. The whole, yeah, it's scary. I mean, good Lord. Going again. I mean, we did somebody... a drill where I, 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 it was the fake robbery. And on the way out, I shot you and you completely complied. I know we've talked about it before, but. I mean, you, you completely comply, and the bad guy still does bad guy things. Yeah. You just don't know like, what's going to happen. Yeah, and on that one, you know, I called you a jerk. and yeah. uh, But as the day went on, I went, I didn't cause my manager to get shot in that what if it was, you guys were really just role-playing a small 
little place. Mm-hmm. But if there are other people in there, I didn't start a gunfight. And these guys yeah. firing, firing, firing. And now some little kid gets hit because right. I started a gunfight on a simple robbery. Like, <sighs> I just there was no decisions. opportunity. No, and it's never... And you're like, okay, yeah. Maybe you missed. I mean, it was you. You probably missed. I mean, it was like 25 feet away. No, I shot you right in the head. It was a perfect I don't know. shot. Who it won that last shot. gentleman's challenge? Doesn't matter. What Who matters? had the souped up in, gun? It, Who had matter? the? No, it was brand new. It was my first time on the. All right, it's, it's on now. We got to go to the next one. Let's go. <laughs> next topic. Next, next topic. Not next time. In let's go to the range and shoot. But next topic. So next topic. You've been practicing nonstop. I'm sure. <sighs> no, not really. <laughs> bullets are expensive. Yeah, bullets I don't want to have to go into the personal yeah. stash. So yeah, that's why you know you can get a cert pistol if you're out there yeah. on Clear Sky hyphen online. You can get the Clear Sky Defender. Um, look for some videos coming out on Clear Sky dot training or at Clear Sky dot training on YouTube. This thing saved my ass. I really feel the deep pocket retention is really hard to find. I haven't thrown it. I've got to maybe find another. I don't have something similar. Um, but I've been carrying my utility blade mm. in the same pocket. It's not messing it up. It's deeper than this. So I have two knives, really one for easy access for Amazon. Because yeah. people have no idea how to put a box in the recycling. They get it open really quick. <laughs> I've talked about this before. My wife's actually been listening to the podcast she's got some stuff going on i don't know if she let listen to last week's but she's been listening so Good. we need to stop talking about her and she's her a great Amazon person box is open so just be so. careful it is your wife so and you got to go home got to go home but i'm armed she, she'd probably just break you in half she's got psychologically you know what she's gonna do she's gonna try to tickle me that's her freaking go-to. She also has this, uh, what does she call it? The lobster clara attack. It's freaking funny. She gets all sore from it. It's basically holding somebody in guard. But she like, uses her strong legs. And she calls it the lobster claw, and she tries to tickle me. And I'm like, I'm not actually fighting you. I don't want to hurt you. Yeah. But She's some of her technique time, right? is pretty good. Yeah. And I don't like getting tickled. And with her... I can't shut it off. Like I, I'm just having Stop a hard time wrapping me. my mind around somebody wanting to tickle you. <laughs> you can't see that, Josh. No, not at all. Like if I was to try to pull that move, I if would have try to so many me, punches in I'll my face. I'll probably kill you. That's if all you I try know. to kill, if you try to tickle me, no, roll, no, it's I'm never. You, it's never if it gonna even happen. crosses your mind, I am going to light you up. I know, that, which is why I don't do it. <laughs> I know what's coming. Like, I've been doing this enough with you to know that, like, that's going to get me hit. <laughs> that's going to get me punched in the mouth. <laughs> so. Oh, it's it's just fun, man. It'll yeah. be interesting to see, like, the long-term effects of what all the daily cycle and pop culture has on martial arts yeah. as we move forward. I and... think it's, it's in a good state. I think people just don't yeah. realize the difference. And... And it's not in schools. Oh, I mean, we can't have anything like that in school because they don't want combat sports in schools. So it's yeah. a real disadvantage. Because there's be some kids that are great confidence. boxers. Oh, like the commercial we did the other day. It's going to teach kids confidence. But yeah. I think I think we've hit this one. I think we should move on. You know, if I uh, we could go off topic because I, I think it's something to ponder. Yeah. Um, that treating sex with your spouse or your significant other. Mm-hmm. As a hobby, it was a TED Talks. It was a TED Talks, and she it was like maybe one thing. I'm like, eh, I don't know. But see, I think guys are more like it's just awesome all the time, yeah. And it can be kind of maybe boring, and girls but it's still awesome. need <laughs> it's still awesome. Still awesome. <laughs> um, girls need more than guys do. Yeah, and for us guys. You know, treat it like a hobby. Like, are you going to get better? Are you going to learn a new move? <laughs> are you just going to keep right. trying to do arm bar on me? Oh, and yeah. I know you're doing arm bar. Right. Like, it's boring, Josh. Every time I freaking roll with you, you're just trying to put me in an arm bar. It's no fun. I'm trying to get better. So, that's a little one out there for all of you. And I think, you know, you, you ladies, even that, like, everybody can get complacent. Yeah. You know? Keep it, keep, keep it, it interesting. Fresh. Keep it new. You know, put it on the calendar as one yeah. of her, the ladies' things. You know, put it on the calendar and anticipate the because the if you're doing it in between yeah. brushing this, in between brushing your teeth 
and falling asleep, are you at your best performance? Like, no, I'm trying to go to bed. I'm trying to fall asleep. Or I'm asleep. waking up like, <laughs> what? <laughs> it's Kramer. God, there's so many good lines in Seinfeld. But he's like, do you ever fake it? The whole fake it um, episode? You know the one I'm talking about? Yeah, I've seen it, yeah. And he's like, yeah, when it's just enough already and I just want to go to bed. <laughs> Freaking Kramer. Yeah. When it's just yeah. enough already. Yeah, you know. Oh, my gosh. But, you know, mm. do better out there. Suck less at everything. Treat yeah. it like a hobby. Are you complacent? And it's even, do you care about your yourself? Yeah. You know, so many people don't want to have sex. I think it was a different thing. Um, it was a st- well, I think it might have been from the book Make It Stick that I gave to our coaches to read or recommended it to them to read that people would feel happier if they had more sex well yeah I, I, and they felt better about themselves there was a it was a crazy statistic on happiness and oh i don't feel good about myself so now i especially i think for women like i don't feel good i don't feel sexy go out and work out people yeah. don't take and you're going to be happier like work out. Look at how I tied in what we do. How yeah. We're trying to make money. Yeah. Hard living is getting people in shape, yeah. but it's like getting more sex. And you're gonna be happier. I always say that. I'm like, yeah. I used to give guys a hard time, especially. Well, it was probably the demographic of the gym there. But I'm like, dude, your wife came in here after having a baby. She loses all the body weight. She's looking great. And what did you do? You got her pregnant again. Again, yeah. I'm like, she's all hot. <laughs> right, and then now it's stretchy. Now she's going to put it. Now right. she's going to go back to work. Right. And lose all the body weight and do it all again. I'm like, will you leave your wife alone? That's Stop right. touching her. <laughs> well, she got all hot, fact. John. <laughs> like, people are going to want to have more sex. Yeah. The better they feel about themselves. If you look good, you feel good, right? And yeah. And then you'll get naked with your SO all the time, right? Yeah, what'd you call them? Significant other. Oh, S-O. And so, not special operator. I was like, who are you getting down with, Josh? Right, no, like, I, a very beautiful woman. Person light your house on fire? I don't know. That's not funny. Then the drones showed up. It was hey, weird. Don't stop talking about it. I'm not going to bring up that group. But, you know, feel better. Be happy. Like, yeah. what is life? Like, we were talking about last week. You're going to die. What do you want to die of? Die happy. I mean, right. what do you, I mean. It's hard sitting there. It's hard getting worked out. Choose your heart. Yeah. I don't know. I, mean, I don't. In the want... end of the world, what are you going to be doing? I want to be hooking up with my wife. Yeah, I, I thought you were actually going to turn into some sort of pirate that take everybody's stuff. I no, mean, there's that, a that was meteor sort of coming. Like, there's a the, it's the end of the world. Okay, well, yeah, there's a I meteor mean, coming. What probably, are you going to do? I probably. What are you going to do? Bust out a bottle of wine and just spin my. What music last... are you playing? Oh, I don't know. Probably some, <laughs> totally like some heavy Daniel electronica, like, like <laughs> that way. You know, there's like a beat. There's a beat. Too. You need some rhythm. Yeah, you probably should have something with a beat. Right. <laughs> Maybe something a little slower than that. <laughs> slower. All right. Wear out in the first thirty seconds. Like, <laughs> I know. Jesus. Like, are you, you dying on me? <laughs> you get all tired, like just trying to hold me down. So, I, I, you're I like was. that was exhausting. Controlling. It was. But it hey, was still you're gonna be better. Yeah, you're gonna last longer. <laughs> it's essentially what we were learning. So, but I thought it was a good little pot, a little a good TED talks. Yeah. Treat it like a hobby. Yeah. You know, go out and learn. Because you're always something. learning. Yeah. This lady's like, do an online course. Um, I don't know. Is that what? I, I was like, maybe I'll Google it. Maybe I'll find a good. Because once course. you go onto the internet and you start putting in words like how to have sex longer, like. Some of the stuff that comes up. Oh, God. Then you get into the whole money aspect. Now, right. yeah, you're like... Pay now for this. And you're talking about for like... For hymns uh, and all that stuff, too. Like maybe a real sex coach that might offer... I don't how know. How do you she become a sex could... coach? Like, I, I see how you become a martial arts coach, right? Or a life coach, but what qualifies a person to become a sex coach? I don't... I don't... <laughs> I mean, I, is there like I'd a, a video resume? <laughs> a video resume. <laughs> What do you put out there? Send us your resume. <laughs> so, just take a look They've at my work. They've got to be right. They've got to be a psychologist. They're Probably. To some yeah, yeah, degree. Yeah. Dr. Ruth was essentially yeah. a sex yeah. coach. Um, you know? What's that lady on uh, Sirius XM? Dr. Laura. She's pretty good that way. She's not like Dr. Ruth was. Yeah. But I think there's a lot of... There's stuff on YouTube. 
that oh there's plenty can, of people out there yeah that, that are good and can offer just some advice that you might need or just mix it up you don't know how much you need a coach until you realize you've been coached by somebody and you got better at what you were doing and no matter what that thing yeah. is right I do mean, something it's different. a different brain to tell you what you're doing wrong but what I'm telling you and let because we're not going to start a sex therapy thing no more it's feel on better now. about yourself you're more confident you know how to defend yeah. yourself that's going to lead to more happiness mm -hmm. and you feel so, better physically you'll feel better mentally and I think it's you know life is short try to be happy I mean I'm a mm -hmm. Serious person, I think sometimes that's misread. Like I'm not happy just because I'm not. Ah, yay! Don't I mean, unless you're Jim yeah. Gaffigan, you cry. He cracks me up. Yeah, yeah. I I love comedy. I, I'm. I believe you. Yeah, that's why you're yeah. around. Right. I mean, how many times <laughs> do you think I crack? <laughs> There's been times after a roll or punch, he's like, <laughs> "You hit me in the face, John." <laughs> I was like, "Did he just? Did he just punch me in the face and laugh?" And <laughs> brains in the background. Yeah, yep. <laughs> yeah, he did. Oh, uh, right. you know what? I'm done. You're done. I'm done. You don't want to talk about any current events? <sighs> no, I didn't want to talk about how I was getting my butt kicked. Oh yeah, oh, we the don't current have to events. Talk about that, all but right. it's all getting better. One one quick topic, like all the UFO stuff, aliens real, yes or no? Yes. Oh, see, absolutely. Johnson. Yeah. We can't be alone in this yeah. giant universe, or if you want to get into the crazy. Uh, multiverse. There's a really oh, yeah, don't go there. good. That's I've got to listen to it again. Yeah. There's a really good Joe Rogan that I can't do justice. I I need to listen to things because I'm I'm working. <sighs> the, a uh, lot of times we're in the cold plunge. But there is this guy. He's a philo My wife's like, how are you a philosopher of science or something? Like, yeah, I know which dude you're talking about. I've heard him on, on Stephen C. Meyer. Yeah, philosopher of science, the director of the Center of for Science, and I got to hit more. It's just for science and culture at the Discovery Institute. He, um, one of his books was really uh, including Darwin's doubt, the explosive origin of animal life, and the yeah. case for intelligent design, design. which like, freaks a lot of people out. Design there was. A really just interesting um, thing that he had in there. If you change a species, you make these changes. It was only like a few, and it's not going to continue. That like the case for intelligent design and the way things are designed here. That there's got got to be something. And his case is there's a higher being for God. Sure. Joe's of course aliens, which I'm like. Is God an alien? I've said that for years. Is it really like, different? Yeah, no, so like, people won't believe in an angel, but they'll believe in an alien all day, and then some. The question or they'll is, believe what's in the an difference? angel and not an alien. Um, yeah, but that was a really good podcast. Really gets yeah. the wheels turning. But I think there's definitely. I mean, it came out, and again, the news cycle and everything else. Hey, we've got alien bodies, and nobody seems to be like. Can we see, see them. what the well, heck they look what, like? So that there was a lot of extraordinary, extraordinary claims made, but I didn't see any extraordinary evidence. And I watched that whole hearing that came up with the three dudes that were before the subcommittee. And uh, every time someone said, can you give me details on this? He would just say, go back to, we'd have to go into a skiff, which would mean one of those really highly classified rooms where they go and talk about yeah. it. Yeah. So there's no evidence presented other than that blanket statements made. Yeah. So it's not really helping their case without, quote, the evidence. But yeah, they need to roll that. Sucker. That's the only way in this news cycle that people yeah. are going to be like, because they're like, oh, that dude said there's aliens. Whatever. Let me see one. <laughs> yeah. I want to see it. Because there's right? so much talk out there. But it is, it's just really interesting to think Yo, about yeah. the Big Bang. So, so there was the Big nothing. Bang is real. I mean, the, like the Big there Bang may, like, might be wrong. It's a theory. There's another show on Netflix, like some telescope, and they're, I don't know if it's up yet, but I'm like, oh, I got to watch that. I don't know if my wife will. They've got that super fancy one that's out in space right now. It's taking like some of those deep field the one. ones. Yeah, I think it's, that's probably the. They uh, were starting, like, Red Shift is something that they were looking at to uh, um, say that the universe is expanding, right? But this one pr physicist says that it's light fatiguing and that the universe might not actually be expanding, which means that there couldn't have been a Big Bang if there's not an expansion, right? Oh so how much gosh. of that is going to rewrite all of our, our theories, right? Because they're all theories on how the universe was made. And yeah. All it took was one telescope, right? Yeah. I mean, that's... I love that stuff. I Me love too. that stuff. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. how did the universe start? Like, 
Gosh. And if the alien thing is real, then all these ideas that these temples around the world that were built thousands of years ago when the technology didn't exist, suddenly there's credence to those arguments. So that crazy Sukulos guy that starts like UFO whatever shows, right? Yeah. He's right. <laughs> or Eric Von Daniken might be right. But what about the other things that are associated with like people who claim to have been abducted by aliens, right? Well, well what what does that mean? What is that? Or uh, like there's so much that until I see I I want to believe like from the classic X-Files, I want to believe. Yeah, but I want to see X-Files. one get rolled out, right? I want to see its biology. I want to see the physical evidence, right? Yeah. And that, that changes everything. I want to see yeah. the physical. Yeah. But to think this is the only place that life happened. Well, Carl Sagan said if there's other life in the universe, it'll, it'll change everything. But if we're the only life in the universe, that is far more like mind-blowing, right? Because yeah. we're it. In this whole I mean, universe, that whole radio signals that they're looking, yeah. unless they're gobbling them up. How are there? How are there aliens? And we've never picked them up on what is it? Uh, you know, the, what's that tell it like SETI? What it? Yeah, what it, they're so looking for the SETI. radio. So you're signals. looking for a radio signal. We're we're looking for them to communicate in the same way that we are, right? But we're not picking up anything. Like they've never tried to communicate, even in modern times. It's yeah, when yeah. people go, God did this. Yeah. But why didn't God stop somebody for Oppenheimer? There's an, you know, another movie. Why didn't they stop him from creating the bomb? Why didn't he stop us from dropping it on Japan two times? You know, it's that whole thing of yeah. like, is there a God? There's yeah. bad, the evil. Oh, he's going to come back and reintroduce himself when mankind's ready. What? Right. I mean, what does that look like? Straight, like, what does that look like? Right. And that's where I'm like, is it really just a higher power? Is God yeah. just... And sure, it's God, but it's a higher power, all-knowing. all Supreme intelligence, right? That, that would be... You know, that has been evolving for... What did they say the universe is? How well, many they, years they, old? they might have found out it's even older. I think it's a, it's a few... 14 billion years old-ish is the yeah, last what if like, I can recall. What if something's like half of that? Well, I mean, ahead of us, it only 17 took, billion years ahead of us. It took humanity only four to five million years to quote evolve from what we were to being able to put a telescope yeah. into space, right? That's only four to five I'm billion years. Imagine the planet's somebody been around for I guess, four yeah. billion, right? Yeah. So, all of the time of the dinosaurs, that was 65 million years for just like I want to say the Cretaceous, right? Don't, yeah, quote don't, me on this. Quote, uh, so, but 65 million years, right, of evolution, what happened during all of that? You know, yeah. did they leave? Did anything really evolve? I mean, are we the only species on this planet to ever evolve to a point where we could build things and let it be seen? I, there's just such a long history there. You know, dinosaurs ruled the earth for 125 million years ish. Yeah. You know, still a drop in the bucket. Right. Oh, that it's a unknown cosmic time machine and quarterback is the uh, other one we referenced today but yeah. crazy yeah it is crazy i'd love to have those answers so, all right guys we are out of here thanks for joining us